What's going on guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today I wanna to show you how to access the main menu on your arcade one-up machine. Now this does involve soldering and we cannot add games yet. As of making this video, there's no way to add external storage, but there are some settings that we can mess around with. Unfortunately, this does not work with the Street Fighter Edition cabinet that uses a commercial emulator called Moo, but pretty much all the other ones use MAME to emulate the games. This was originally brought to my attention by Glenn's Retro Show. He's a fellow YouTuber, awesome guy, and I recommend you go subscribe to his channel right now. I'm going to leave a link in the description. He makes a lot of awesome videos about the mini arcade machines and the arcade one-up machines. He's just all around awesome dude, so definitely go check his channel out. Glenn actually got this idea from a Reddit user who goes by the name of Barry Barry Sneaky. I'm going to leave a link to that post. He goes over in great detail how to do this and he's got a lot more information so I recommend reading through that also. A word of warning before we get started. When modding anything there's always a chance of bricking something or breaking something. So do this at your own risk. It does involve soldering so if you've never messed around with the soldering iron before I would pass this up. So the very first thing we need to do is pull the back panel off the arcade one up machine. We need to access the main board. The board itself is very easy to access. There's two screws holding it onto the back of the monitor. We're going to remove those and unplug all of the plugs here. So I recommend taking a picture of it so you know exactly how everything plugs back in. We're going to bring the main board over to our workbench and we need to remove it from the metal housing. There's three screws here because we've already removed one of them for the ground to the LCD. After removing the board from the metal casing, you'll see a plastic little separator in there. Do not lose it. Make sure you put it back in when we reassemble everything. This will keep the board from shorting out on the case itself. The main piece of this puzzle is a male USB 2.0 adapter. Now I got mine from the dollar store. If you have a local Dollar General around, they probably have these on the shelf. I just cut it, spliced it. If you don't have a dollar store near you, they do sell these on Amazon anywhere from $2 to $5. I'll leave some links in the description. What we want to do is add the female side of the USB 2.0 cable to the USB host on the board itself. If you can solder, it's really simple to do. I just added a little solder to the pads. I tend them. And I also tend the ends of the cables that I stripped on the female USB adapter. Here's a quick chart by Barry Barry Sneaky. You really can't explain it any better than this, so I just went ahead and used his chart. And here's a quick look at what I've done. These cheap USB cables have very, very thin and flimsy wire inside of them, so turn your heat down if you have an adjustable iron. Mine was a little too hot. It started melting the insulation on the wire, but it's fine. It didn't go through, so I'm going to keep it just like this. And I also added some Kapton tape just to hold it down and protect it from hitting the metal casing when we place it back in. You can also use electrical tape or hot glue if you have that. All we need to do now is reassemble the unit and plug in our USB keyboard. Now I did try a wireless Logitech, but it would not register, so I had to pull out an old HP wired keyboard, USB 2.0, it should work fine. I left enough length on this cable here so I could wrap it around the front, plugged in my USB keyboard. Sometimes it will not register if you plug it in and then boot it up. You might have to unplug it and plug it back in. Just try that before rebooting the unit itself. And in order to access the menu, all we need to do is start a game and make sure it's registering. If it doesn't, like I said, go ahead and unplug it. Plug it right back in. Make sure you have a game running and press tab. You'll now have access to the main menu. I'm going to go ahead and zoom up on it. We do have some basic functionality here. Under Input General, we're going to press Enter. That's going to bring us into the next menu. And the first option we have is User Interface. We can change how we navigate the main menu or the user interface itself. I recommend leaving this alone. And in order to go back, just press Escape. If you want to close it down, press Tab again. Next option is Player 1 Controls. I would recommend not messing around with this either. If you want to change the input on a certain game, go to Input This Game. You can change it right here. Just press enter and you can remap all the controls if you want to. I'm just going to go back with up on my joystick and it's set. You can do that with each player if you'd like to. Next option we have are dip switches. You can turn on service mode if you'd like to. Leave it on for a second. It'll go into service mode. You have a self test, switches and sounds, grid. Each game's going to look a little different. There might be more functionality in certain games. 
I'm going to leave mine off. Next up, we can change the difficulty. So it's set at normal. We can go to hard. We can go to very easy or we can go to free play. Score option, coin A, coin B, rack advance cheats. I'm going to back out of this menu. You may see a few different options in certain games, so just make sure you check through it. It's going to be a little different for each one. Some of them are going to be exactly the same. There's tons of documentation online for MAME. I'm going to leave a link to the official MAME website if you want to learn about these settings at all. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Hopefully in the future, USB support can be added somehow so we can go into these menus and choose games from a USB drive. We could add tons of stuff to this. The hardware is capable of playing hundreds of different MAME games at full speed. But if you're looking to really up the game, I have made a video on how to install a Raspberry Pi inside of one of these. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. It's actually on screen now. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.